y'all. I'm Paula Dean. You know, here in Savannah, we enjoy spending a lot of time by the water. So today, I'm gonna be going outside and I'm gonna have a Riverside party. I'm gonna be sharing with y'all some of my favorite carnival finger foods like my sugary sweet candy apples that will satisfy any sweet tooth. Then folks are gonna be rolling, rolling, rolling for my finger licking sticky cinnamon rolls. And hey, get the fryer warmed up because I'm serving up some of Savannah's freshest seafood, crisp and savory calamari. So dock your boats and straighten out your sea legs because this is gonna be one heck of a Riverside party. Hey y'all, I want to share with y'all something that we do here in Savannah. Every Saturday of a new month, we have what we call First Saturday on River Street. The, the restaurants bring their food out into the streets. You have cold beer, you have all kind of good food. You have artists uh, doing their drawings out on the, on the street. You have entertainment. It may be a juggler, it may be a, a man playing a guitar and singing, but this is just like one big block party. So, Michael and I got to talking the other day and we said, you know, well, why can't we have our own first Saturday out here on our little piece of the river? So that's what we're gonna be doing today. I'm so glad that y'all are with me because I'm gonna be cooking up food that's just pure fun to eat. Is there anybody out there that doesn't like a candied apple? I don't know of a soul that doesn't just love them and they just scream street party and carnival. So I'm gonna be making toffee apple and I'm gonna start with two cups of sugar. And again, that humidity's kinda getting me out here. I'm gonna add one cup of packed light brown sugar I'm gonna add two thirds a cup of white corn syrup. I'm gonna add two thirds of a cup of butter. Sounds delicious, doesn't it? And I'm gonna add one cup of heavy cream. And we're gonna cook this one until it reaches 240 degrees. All right, now we're gonna put this on the burner. And like I said, I'm gonna stir this until Everything is dissolved again, and uh, we're gonna cook this to 240 degrees. Now this recipe all, also calls for vanilla flavoring, but I'm not gonna put it in right now because the alcohol in the flavor will dissipate. So it's gonna be really, really delicious with the caramelly, buttery vanilla taste. Now we're gonna stick the thermometer in it so that we'll know when it gets to 240. It's just rolling right along. Okay, that's at 240. So we'll bring this over here. And I'm gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla the reason I didn't add it earlier is because I didn't want the flavor to cook out of it. All right, we're gonna give that a quick stir. Oh, look, somebody's going shrimping. Mmm, I wish I was going. Oh, the shrimp here on the, on the coast of Georgia are just out of this world. They're the sweetest, most flavorful shrimp. The other day, Michael and I was out here in the backyard and the crabbers were coming in. And Michael did that whistle that I can't do, got his attention and said, you got some extras? And he said, yeah. And he pulled over and Michael bought a bushel 
of crabs right off his boat because we wanted to go crabbing, but we just didn't have time. So uh, Michael came out here to his kitchen and, and steamed those crabs and he picked them and fed them to me. They were so good. Mmm, doesn't that look delicious? And I think I'm gonna put nuts all over him. Look how good that looks. Look at that big boy. He doesn't even want to stand up, he's so big. And if y'all think this one looks good, just wait until you try the others. Now, if you want to make a scrumptious caramel apple, just heat up one 14 ounce pack of the cubed caramels, along with two tablespoons of milk to 240 degrees. It's so simple, y'all, but the flavor is out of this world. And to make a sinfully sweet red cinnamon apple, heat up two cups of sugar, one cup of water, a half a cup of white corn syrup, a teaspoon of cinnamon, and a little bit of red food coloring. And in no time, y'all are gonna be ready to enjoy a mouth-watering candy apple that tastes just like the one you got at the fair. Y'all come back, and I'm gonna be cooking cinnamon rolls, and I'm going fishing for calamari. Welcome back, y'all. For those of you that have just tuned in, today we're having a first Saturday here at Michael and Paula's house. Now, first Saturday, what is that? The first Saturday of every month here in Savannah, we celebrate down on River Street. All the vendors come out with their foods and there's artists and there's entertainment and lots and lots and lots of real good food. Now, I wanna get started on some cinnamon rolls. I'm going to pour a half a cup of water in here, and I'm going to pour a small one-fourth of an ounce packet of yeast, and I'm going to let that sit for a minute. Now to our milk and our butter, I'm going to add a fourth of a cup of sugar, a pinch of salt, and one egg. Now to this, I'm gonna add two cups of flour. And this is an all-purpose flour that we're using because we have our yeast that's going in after this, so that's gonna do all that beautiful rising for us. I'm gonna stir that up, and the yeast just had a chance to ripen, so we're ready to pour that in now. And then we're going to add our last two cups of flour because you can see this is kind of soupy. I just love the smell of yeast. I just love it. It takes me back to my school days when the, when the uh, kitchen at school made those yummy, yummy, heavenly, light as a feather yeast rolls. Oh, they were so good. Okay, so this is a total of four cups of all-purpose flour that we've got. Now we're just gonna mix this up. And now I'm gonna come in here with my hands and just kind of knead my dough and make sure all that flour is mixed in. All right, now I'm just gonna cover this, like I said, let it double in size. When it's twice that size, we know it's ready. You'll want to cover it, and I've got one over here that's been sitting in a nice warm place, and you can see that it's doubled in size. Okay, now we're going to take a little flour, and we're going to dust our board, and we're going to take our, our dough and roll it out, and you'll want to make sure that you flour your rolling pin real good. You don't want the dough to stick to your pen, so here we go. Oh, these are gonna be so wonderful. We're gonna roll this out to about a 15 by nine, and that looks like we're getting very, very close. Now we're gonna take our lovely, lovely, wonderful smelling piece of yeast dough, 
and we're going to brush it with butter. Mmm, I could almost eat it raw. <laughs> okay, now for the good part on the inside. Now I'm going to take two thirds of a cup of sugar and I'm going to add two tablespoons of cinnamon. And I'm just going to toss them together. Just mix them up real good. And then I'm going to sprinkle our dough with the cinnamon sugar mixture. Let's use it all. All right, now I'm gonna spread a mixture of raisins and chopped walnuts. A lot of folks don't like the raisins, so if you don't, just leave them out, but I, I just love them. And I think maybe they're probably good for you. All right, now starting at the small end, we're just gonna lift this and roll. And this is going to make 12 good sized cinnamon rolls. I'm going to put our dough into a pan that's been buttered and sugared. The sugar will help them from sticking to the pan. So here we go. Look at that beautiful cinnamon roll. We're gonna let them sit in a warm place for about 45 minutes. And when they're ready, we're gonna pop them into a 350 degree oven and we're gonna bake them for about 30 minutes. And guess what? I've got some in the oven ready for us. Ooh, and you can see what that butter and sugar did on the bottom. It's giving it a little bit more sweetness. Now this is just a simple glaze, y'all, using two cups of powdered sugar, half a stick of butter, a couple of tablespoons of warm water, and a teaspoon of vanilla flavoring. Doesn't that look just incredible? You can see the hotness from the cinnamon rolls are starting to melt down our frosting. And do you know my favorite cinnamon roll in the whole batch? Do you see which one it is? It's that one in the center. It's got all the goop on it. Look at that. How awesome does that look? Mmm. Oh my goodness. Michael can have the candied apples. I'm gonna have the cinnamon rolls. And coming up next, y'all, we're changing gears. We're gonna have some calamari. Cause I know everybody loves candied apples and calamari. Welcome back, y'all. It's first Saturday in mine and Michael's backyard. Now, if you weren't here earlier for me to tell you what First Saturday was, it's a celebration, the first Saturday of each month here in Savannah that takes place on River Street. There's all kind of fun, food, cold beer. So a while ago, I made candy apples and cinnamon rolls, and I've passed that on to Michael. And listen to the seagulls. They know what we're fixing to do next because what I'm cooking up now comes from where they feed and that's out of the Atlantic Ocean, and it's calamari. And I've got about two cups of sliced calamari here in the bowl, and I'm gonna cover it with a couple of cups of buttermilk. Now the buttermilk is gonna help tenderize it. Now I'm gonna let our calamari sit for about two hours, and they're gonna be so delicious, you're not gonna believe how good they are. And I've got some here that's been sitting and soaking that buttermilk up. All right, now I'm gonna come over here and drain it. And if you're cooking outside and you don't have a sink, these little wet handy wipes are just wonderful for keeping your hands clean. All right, now I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna take some flour. Now to this, I'm gonna add a little salt. 
and a little black pepper. I'm going to stir that around to make sure that's evenly distributed. And then I'm going to take our calamari and I'm just going to toss it in that flour. And not only does the buttermilk help tenderize the calamari, it also helps the flour stick. So let's move this over here a little closer. And I think I'm going to give it a few shakes just to make sure it doesn't have a lot of flour. And I'm just going to drop that down into our hot oil. Now you can use peanut oil or you can use a regular vegetable oil. This is going to be yummy. And I love the part with the tentacles. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to give that a little stir to get it distributed. And now I'm going to turn my heat back up on high. Now in this pan, I'm going to add a cup of pickled banana peppers. And I'm going to add about a half a cup of green onion tops. And I'm going to give it a squirt of fresh lemon juice. And I'm just going to kind of toss that in there. There's really no cooking to this. Now I'm going to toss in some chopped fresh tomatoes. And I think I'm going to add a tablespoon of butter. I'm just going to toss that ever so lightly. And then I'm going to take up our calamari. Look how delicious that looks. And I'm going to drain it on a paper towel. Okay. All right, now I'm going to take our calamari and I'm just going to toss it back in this butter and these peppers and the tomatoes. The pickled banana peppers are just going to be wonderful. Doesn't that look delicious? Oops, get back in there. All right, and our calamari's ready. And all I'm gonna do is just pile this up on a platter and just let everybody come in and pick it to pieces. I'm not a pickled pepper eater, but I just adore these with the calamari. They give it just a bite that you don't expect. And that's all it is to our calamari. You know, with all this food, I'm dying of thirst. We need something to wash it down with. So when we come back, I'm gonna share a quick tip with you on how to make a pitcher of delicious ginger lemonade. There's a lot going on out here in this yard today. I hear Nick and Jody over there spraying for bugs. Planes are flying over, boats are going by, Cody's swimming. Otis and Sam are just running around barking and acting crazy. But even with all this going on, I've got to share a quick tip with y'all. I'm going to turn a pitcher of ordinary lemonade into a really, really nice gingery pitcher of lemonade. And to do that, I'm going to start with one gallon of boiling water. I'm going to add three cups of sugar to it. I'm going to add 10 slices of fresh ginger. I love fresh ginger. And I've only just recently have become a big fan of it. Now I'm going to add four cups of fresh lemon juice. Just going to pour those four cups of fresh juice. And I saw the seeds go in with it. I'm going to let this come to a ball. And then I'm going to pull it off and I'm going to let it cool. And then I'm going to pour it in a pitcher. And I'm going to serve that over ice with a round of lemon and a twig of mint. Cheers. I think you're going to love it. Mmm. We have had such a good time today out here with the kids and the animals and the birds and everything.
everything that's going on. And you know, the, hush, Sam, hush. Sa Sam wants to talk, excuse me, y'all. But the calamari is so delicious. And it's just perfect for being out here on the water. And the candied apples are so good. But the cinnamon rolls, y'all, they are just truly wonderful. Oh, and my goodness, look behind me. That's the flying cloud. That's Mike Sullivan, my shrimp and friend. I think I'm gonna take him an apple out there, and I think I'm gonna take me a cinnamon roll. Cody, you wanna go swimming? Come on, come on, buddy. Let's go swimming.